Hello everyone, it's Justin Ryan and you're watching the latest episode of Spatial Insider. This series is dedicated to showing you the vision. I'm talking apps, updates, and news for Vision Pro and Vision OS. Please make sure to like and subscribe, it means so much to me. In this episode, we're going to talk about Vision OS 26 because it's jam-packed with a lot of amazing and exciting features, some really big ones and some that flew under the radar that I want to make sure that you're aware of. And I also want to talk about my trip to WWDC at Apple Park. We need to start by talking about personas in Vision OS 26 because they are incredible. My mind is still literally blown from the first time I looked at my new persona in Vision OS 26. It captured my facial hair perfectly, captured my eyebrows, my eyelashes, the freckles on my face. I'm telling you, you have to try this. The other thing you need to try is hopping on a spatial FaceTime call with your friends that also have Vision OS 26. You can also add glasses to your personas and now there's over a thousand ways that you can customize your glasses for your persona. We're talking colors, materials, it's all very cool. Next, let's talk about widgets in Vision OS 26. One thing we saw with Meta years ago is they talked about these things called augments where you could place them in your physical space and they would stay in your physical space but yet we haven't seen them yet. And it's been years since then. But in Vision OS 26, we've got them now. You can take these widgets and place them around your room or in different rooms, and they will stay there. They're persistent. Vision OS 26 comes with a lot of pre-built widgets. We're talking clocks and calendars and music and photos and many, many more. I can guarantee you there's gonna be a lot more widgets to come soon as Vision OS developers are super excited about this. I'm seeing videos posted online of people placing widgets on their air conditioner unit. You turn it on just by looking at it. I'm seeing people that are putting movie poster widgets where you look at the movie poster, you click on it, and then all of a sudden you're put into the virtual cinema and you're watching that movie. I mean, these are the things that Meta was talking about that they haven't delivered yet. And Apple just brought it to us as part of this new update. I also love that with widgets, you can place them in a room, leave the room, and they will disappear from your view until you go back in the room and then they're perfectly placed exactly where you left them. It changes everything. Now the walls in my room, though they look bare, actually have photos and widgets all over them. And every time I put my Vision Pro back on, they'll be exactly there for me to see. It's so cool. Next, let's talk about spatial scenes. We already know about spatial photos, which gives a little bit of depth, a little bit of 3D, but spatial scenes is much bigger than that. It's taking AI and some of these algorithms and it's ultimately adding depth into your photos. And you could even do this with regular photos. And I'm seeing this being implemented not just in Vision OS, but in iOS as well. Apple is going all in on this experience. When I was in Apple Park, they gave me a demonstration of this, which was ultimately a couple photos. And one of those was looking through a cave into the ocean. And as I looked around through the cave, I could see parts of the ocean that actually didn't even exist in the photo. I'm also seeing spatial scenes being implemented in the new spatial web, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Next, let's talk about shared spatial experiences because this one is truly powerful when you think about where this is all going you can connect with people nearby you or far from you that also have vision os 26 and you can do things together spatially so in this example my friend matt and i were sitting by the pool we got our vision pros on and we decided to check out a couple different experiences we checked out web browsers together we checked out photos and videos but one of the coolest things was playing virtual chess together you've got to try this to ultimately understand how cool this is but when you think about what this is going to mean in the next five to 10 years, when these headsets become lighter and more affordable and more people have these, you'll have spatial objects, whether it's widgets or shared experiences happening all around you. And this is going to be an incredible future. Think of you and your friend just hanging out and you don't have this giant movie screen in front of you. However, you both have your glasses on or your headsets on and you do a shared spatial experience and now you've got this giant cinema in front of you and you're watching a movie together. That is where we're headed. Next, let's talk about the spatial web because Vision OS 26 is about to disrupt the entire internet. I'm talking about every website now that can go into reader mode in Safari can now become a spatial experience. Every photo can be transformed into a spatial photo or a spatial scene. And with the spatial web, spatial developers can include 3D models into their websites so that users on the Vision Pro can just pull those 3D objects from the web and put it in their physical space. Think about that for a moment. Think about the experiences you could then start to create as a web designer to make your brand or your store come alive around the user in that experience. This is the future of the web. We also got some exciting updates about new devices that can 
connect to the Vision Pro. So we're talking about the Logitech Muse, which is a, ultimately a 3D pen that allows you to draw in 3D space with precision. We can also now connect PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers to the Vision Pro. I think this is going to be huge for gaming, especially when I think about all of the game developers that created their games through these gaming engines that require controllers and the feasibility to move those over to the Vision OS ecosystem. This should make that a lot easier. And also for those developers that were looking for the precision or the tactile feedback that comes from a controller, they're going to be pretty excited about this. So I think we're going to see a lot more games coming to Vision OS soon. Now, we all love immersive content on the Apple Vision Pro. Well, it's exciting now because 180 degree video as well as 360 degree video is now natively supported. So when you think about that, the Insta 360s, the GoPro cameras of the world, these will now be natively supported on Vision Pro. One of the coolest things I was able to see at Apple Park is the new interactive immersive environment, which is the Jupiter environment. So you're on one of Jupiter's moons and you're staring at Jupiter. Most environments have the night and day toggle. However, this one, instead of night and day, you've got a lot more options. You can change the speed. So you're able to watch Jupiter shift quickly and the different storms happening on Jupiter. And then far off in the distance, you see the sun. As you speed up or slow down time, you see the shadows shifting differently on the moon. And you also see Jupiter's speed changing. And I was told by Apple that you could actually stay in the headset for a full nine hours to get the full rotation. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge to me. I'm sure we're gonna take them up on that one. The Jupiter environment is not yet available in the beta. However, I will tell you this, it is worth the wait. And then Vision OS came with a lot of other cool features too. Now with your app icons on your home view, you can make folders so you can categorize all of your apps. I'm very excited about that because at this point, I think I've got like 20 pages that I scroll through. Another feature that got added, which I know is going to be very popular, which is the unlock your iPhone feature. You pull up your iPhone, you look at it, and it unlocks it. It works like magic. Also, speaking about iPhones, another feature that I don't think I've seen mentioned, which I'm a huge fan of, is that Vision Pro will now recognize your iPhone. So when you're holding it, you can put it up in front of a spatial window, and it will show your iPhone screen in front of the spatial window. And while you're in an environment, you can look at your phone, you can pick it up, and it will show you your phone screen. It's a really nice feature. Another one that I really love is the look to scroll feature. And you can change the setting here to speed it up or slow it down in settings. And then as you look at the bottom of a window or you look at the top of a window without even needing to go like this, it will just move the window. It'll just scroll the window for you. I absolutely love this feature, not having to do this and just looking at it and the window just scrolls for me. I wish I had this on every other device that I own. It's that amazing. Hand tracking now on Vision OS 26 is now at 90 Hertz. So it should be even better now when you look at hand tracking. I've yet to test this, but I will definitely be testing this. Apple Intelligence received a couple upgrades for Vision Pro, including more language support, as well as some additional support for Image Playground. There were also some accessibility features that were added to Vision OS 26, like live recognition, some new Zoom features, some better ways for typing. And I think there's a feature that a lot of our enterprise users are going to love, and that's the ability to save your eye and hand information on an iPhone so that you can seamlessly transfer your setup to another device to make that faster than it is currently. I also love the new liquid glass design that's now on every single Apple platform. There were a lot of rumors this last year about how Vision Pro wasn't going anywhere and it was a dead on arrival product. And now look what's happening. Vision OS is inspiring all of the other platforms. It truly is the future. And I'm so grateful that all of you are on this journey with me to help other people see the vision. Lastly, I will just say that my trip to WWDC was incredible. It was truly a dream for me. I was able to meet some of the largest YouTubers. I was able to meet some amazing people from around the world. The energy at Cupertino at Apple Park is unlike anything else I've experienced. Apple Park itself is an incredible, beautiful campus. Thank you so much to Apple for inviting me to WWDC. It was truly a pleasure and I loved every minute of it. Again, if you like this sort of content, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to this channel. It means so much to me as we're helping others see the vision. And with that, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next one.